Phineas Gage, the accidental neuroscience pioneer. It was 1848. Railroads were being built all over the country. There was a man named Phineas Gage who worked as a foreman on a railroad construction site. He was a very responsible and smart man. Phineas's job was very important. The path of the railroad went through rocky terrain. Gage led a group of people who used dynamite to blow up the rocks in the way and clear a path for the railroad. Another crew would follow them and build the tracks. Phineas Gage made sure the blasters cleared the path fast enough. The blasters would drill a hole in the rock. Then, a stick of dynamite would be placed in the hole. A fuse was attached to the dynamite, and the hole was filled with sand. Gage would use his trusty tamping iron to pack the sand down tightly, in order to force the explosion downwards, breaking the rock into little bits. This tamping iron would become very important to Gage later in life. It was three feet seven inches long, and one and a quarter inches in diameter. It had a sharp point at one end. The responsible foreman had blown up hundreds of rocks using this technique. But on September 13th, 1848, everything changed. Tragedy struck Phineas Gage. No one knows exactly what happened. Some say that a worker forgot to pour sand over the dynamite. Others think Gage hit the side of the hole, releasing a shower of sparks. But one thing is certain. The tamping iron shot out of the hole like a bullet from a gun. It hit Phineas on his left cheek, sharp end first, entering his head. Traveling with great force, it passed behind his left eye into Gage's brain and flew out the top of his head. The 13 and 1 quarter pound steel tamping iron pierced Gage's head and landed more than 80 feet away. Although the rod had broke his upper jaw and put a large hole through the top of his forehead, Phineas was conscious, able to speak, and had remarkably little pain while being rushed to town. Dr. John Martin Harlow was called in to treat Gage's wounds. Dr. Harlow is very important to both Phineas's recovery and the discoveries gained from the accident. But in the days before antibiotics, not even the most talented physician could prevent infection. Phineas became very ill after his wound became infected. He had to be under the watchful eye of Dr. Harlow. Even after his bandages were removed, Phineas had lots of recovering left to do. It became clear that the once responsible and polite foreman had changed. Gage was a fussy patient that disobeyed Dr. Harlow's orders. He was childish and rude to the doctor. Something was very different about Gage. He wasn't just grumpy about the accident. Phineas had healed enough to go back to work almost a year after his accident. Unfortunately, his old boss wouldn't rehire him. Gage was not responsible enough to resume his old job. In need of money, Phineas traveled all over New England, showing off his injury in sideshows. He even went to P.T. Barnum's Museum of Oddity, New York City. Phineas liked working with animals, so he eventually got a job driving stagecoaches in Chile. He lived there for many years, until he got sick and had to return home. After suffering from seizures for many weeks, Phineas Gage died at the age of 36. He had no children nor a wife. Dr. Harlow never forgot about Phineas, his incredible injury, or the drastic change in his personality. Upon hearing of Gage's death, Dr. Harlow requested that his remains be exhumed, and Phineas's skull, as well as the tamping iron, be sent to him. The skull arrived some weeks later. It was disfigured with a large hole in the top. The damage was clear evidence that the tamping iron had removed a portion of Phineas's brain. After studying his notes, interviewing people who knew from Gage, and studying the skull, Dr. Harlow wrote a report describing the curious change in behavior. In his report, 
he said, the equilibrium, or balance, so to speak, between his intellectual faculties and animal propensities seems to have been destroyed. He is fitful, irreverent, indulging at times in the grossest profanity, which was not previously his custom, manifesting but little difference for his fellows and impatient of restraint or advice when it conflicts with his desire. A child in his intellectual capacity and manifestations, he has the animal passions of a strong man, Previous to his injury, although untrained in schools, he possessed a well-balanced mind and was looked upon by those who knew him as a shrewd, smart businessman, very energetic and persistent in executing all his plans of operation. In this regard, his mind was radically changed, so decidedly that his friends and acquaintance said he was no longer gauged. Dr. John Martin Harlow Using Gage's evidence, the medical community came to realize that the front portion of the brain was somehow related to personality. We know now that the area of brain destroyed during Gage's accident is the frontal lobe. It is the brain area responsible for intellect, responsibility, and personality. Using many modern techniques, researchers confirmed which parts of Phineas' brain was destroyed. Their findings were consistent with the changes in behavior reported by Dr. Harlow. Although the relationship between brain structure and function is common knowledge now, it is important to remember the accidental pioneer that helped begin unraveling the mysteries of the brain, beginning the study of neuroscience. The end.